Hello, everyone. As clinicians, I think we all recognize that CSF protein with lumbar punctures is often higher than the reference range cutoffs of 35 milligrams per deciliter that most laboratories use. Using the Mayo Clinic study of aging, we found a significant number of normal patients had a protein much higher than that standard cutoff, and that the elevated CSF protein was independently associated with older age, male sex, and diabetes. Using this population-based evaluation of CSF protein, we can establish more accurate reference ranges for CSF protein that can factor in these variables, especially age. My name is John Chen, and I'm a professor of ophthalmology and neurology and a neuro-ophthalmologist at the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. On behalf of my co-authors, I would like to discuss our manuscript, Population-Based Evaluation of Total Protein in the Cerebrospinal Fluid, which will be published in the Mayo Clinic Proceedings. Our study took advantage of the Mayo Clinic Study of Aging, which is a population-based study in Olmsted County, Minnesota, that ev evaluates variables associated with aging. All participants are invited to undergo a lumbar puncture to evaluate for signs of aging. As part of the lumbar puncture, evaluation of normal constituents, such as cells and protein, are obtained. This allowed us a unique opportunity to evaluate the range of CSF protein among 633 participants in a normal aging population and determine variables that influence the CSF protein. Ultimately, we found that older age, male sex, and diabetes were all associated with CSF protein, with age having the largest effect. The average CSF protein was 52 milligrams per deciliter, which is higher than our laboratory cutoff of 35 milligrams per deciliter. The higher CSF protein was because participants in the Mayo Clinic's Clinic study of aging are predominantly older patients. This is an important study because the CSF proteins were done on patients without neurologic disease. Prior studies were either smaller studies on healthy individuals or larger studies on patients who are undergoing lumbar puncture for clinical reasons, which could potentially influence CSF protein results. Because our study focused on healthy individuals within the Mayo Clinic state of aging, we were able to provide a population-based assessment of CSF protein in normal individuals. This will have a direct impact on clinical care. Based on this study, we are changing the reference ranges for CSF protein to account for both age and sex at the Mayo Clinic. This will provide more accurate cutoffs. This will be helpful for both providers and patients because a CSF protein of 50 in a 70-year-old patient would previously trigger a red abnormal result, which can be anxiety provoking, but we have now demonstrated that this is well within normal range for an older patient. This, was, this will allow us to identify pathologic increases in CSF protein and reduce the frequency of false positives. Our next step is implementing these CSF cutoffs for the Mayo Clinic, and this work is being led by several of my co-authors on this manuscript. We think this will be very helpful for our patients and for clinicians. For more details, I invite you to read our paper, Population-Based Evaluation of Total Protein in Cerebrospinal Fluid, which will be published in the upcoming issue of Mayo Clinic Proceedings. We hope you found this presentation from the content of our website valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our homepage is www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. There you'll find access to information for our social media content, such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about Healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.